Jess McCarris. Do you want to see this lot here? <laughs> These are the cheapy ones. I'll throw you a bit of a bread roll up in a bit. <laughs> These are my top of the pops trousers, you know. <laughs> Jasper Garrett on top of the pops. <laughs> They're silly buggers, aren't they? <laughs> it's like Vera Lynn doing the old grey whistle test, isn't it? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. oh, knock it, it's in tune, so we'll get it done. Okay. Oh, I've got a great deal going on strings, you know. I buy all the Bay City Rollers cast-offs. <laughs> I mean, they're not exactly new, but then again, they haven't been used, have they? <laughs> There's going to be an interval soon. Um, <laughs> uh, they say, hmm? <laughs> what are canaries, everyone? Put <laughs> back in your cage. <laughs> and uh, I actually, actually come from Birmingham. I thought you'd be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, um, I live. Uh, um, I live in a cottage uh, in Birmingham. <laughs> Isn't it silly? Uh, two up and one down. It is. <laughs> it's like a toilet with an outside house. <laughs> this is. I, I bought it off this estate agent, and uh, he was. He showed us round about four minutes flat. And uh, he was brilliant, you know, my life, fantastic, you know, brilliant, you know, and what's really good. And uh, he avoided all the niggly questions like, where's the door? <laughs> and I wanted to know what the tire marks were on the roof. <laughs> he was very evasive about that, you know? We found out what it was all about when we moved in. We are, in fact, the last house in the flight path to Birmingham Airport. <laughs> Why do they come low? What the hell? Huh? Hasn't affected me though! <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's great fun watching the air lingus planes coming sideways, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you can see them signalling out the windows, you know. Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Big L on the tail. <laughs> oh dear. You're late. <laughs> you bought a note. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're the newly married couple. It's all right. I was told about her. Right. <laughs> right, yeah. Nice to see you're up and about again. Really nice. <laughs> you can always tell them they've still got the pyjamas on. They don't realise that. Uh, and, um, we're having this cesspit built, you know. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Because we've got no sewerage, you see. We're not on mainline sewerage and things, and we've got no, um, no bog. <laughs> you know. It's like a spade job in the morning, you know. <laughs> and he's getting fed up of it, so we have to do something. <laughs> and, uh, and, We've got these navvies built. It's 800 quid, you know, to have a cesspit built. I don't know. I didn't even know what it was. I 
Well, I do now, blimey. 800 quid I found out quick. And it's all four bricks. Mind you, they're doing a great job, you know. And uh, all that just for Seth. <laughs> and these navvies are building it, you know, and uh, they're English, really, just the same. <laughs> Fascinated with the planes. <laughs> they keep trying to attract the helicopters to land in the garden with a great big bag of swoop. <laughs> I turned down new faces once, you know. Um, well, I did, I, I, this bloke came along to see me at this club, and he's from New Faces, and he saw me work. And I think someone had fed him a couple of ales, you know. And he said, oh, yes, you've got to have him. <laughs> I started watching the programme after that, because I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. Oh, TV, knock it. This was a while ago, ages ago, about 18 months ago. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I'd love to do it, love to do it. And then I started watching it. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's that and opportunity knocks and crossroads. That's sort of syndrome, isn't it, really? And, uh, I turned it down. It was after that show that they had that eight-year-old girl on with a wooden leg who tap danced. <laughs> <laughs> and won. <laughs> what can you do in three minutes that's going to impress ten million people? Eh? I had a few ideas, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my trousers off and urinate over Tony Hatch. <laughs> yeah. I don't suppose I've got much for presentation and star quality. <laughs> I'd have done all right on content now. <laughs> what? 98% truth, that is, mate. <laughs> anyway, I thought what we'd do, to start off the evening, and this is a song I wrote. Um, unfortunately, Solomon and Garfunkel wrote it first. <laughs> They're always nicking my songs, isn't it? <laughs> now, I, I just, this is a chorus song. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> um, and I've had a request for this, and it's, uh, it's from this bloke in Southampton. Still being good stead for many years. And um, it's, a, it's a song called Chastity Belt. It, uh, uh, it's very popular. <laughs> hands up all the people that know Chastity Belt. Sorry, hands up in the air, all the people that. <laughs> I've been to Nottingham before, you know. Uh, it, uh, it was taught to me by my auntie, um, yeah, like a middle-aged greaser. <laughs> Goes to folk clubs, has this terrible habit or affliction called spoonerismitis. Yeah, and she's always saying really silly things like chish and fips and poop bolish. <laughs> silly old bat. <laughs> and uh, she taught me this particular song. And it's got this chorus in, which I'd like to join in with. See? <laughs> You're not going to do it, are you? I'm going to do it. <laughs> You're going to wait till the course, you're going to sit there going, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> now, the chorus on this one comes in between the verses, so it's ever so easy to spot. <laughs> See, it's not a trick song. And uh, all you do is you repeat the last line, right, of the song, and then you ad lib nonny nonny. <laughs> Isn't that easy? <laughs> no, it's not easy. Mate. Yeah. But it's, it's always a bit awkward doing chorus songs in sort of theatres because, like, people, you know, you're all sat down there and you're all very conscious of the fact that you're singing, you know, it's your neighbours fault because you're going, oh, no, no, shut up. <laughs> so what I'll do, when I get to the chorus, I'm going to allow mumbling. <laughs> see, you see, then you can go, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Women are lucky, of course, you've got handbags and you sort of go, well, oh, no, 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 no.
this next song. <laughs> Pray, mental Jaden, may I lee your bother. Condemn me no longer to warn or to meep. Struck down what I fought for a heart. <laughs> I lie doomed and whining. Let down your drawbridge, I'll enter your keep. Chorus. Enter your keep, noddy noddy, enter your keep, noddy noddy, let down your drawbridge, I'll enter Knockout? <laughs> Why me? Why me? <laughs> this second verse is sung by a fair maiden, uh, which I'll try and imitate. <laughs> Very badly. <laughs> a couple of reasons, but it didn't <laughs> Alas, noble Nerent, I am Matei Baden. I'm married to Sir Oswald, the Celt, the cunning old Celt. <laughs> He's gone to the wars. Wars, in this case, is spelt W-A-R-S. <laughs> for twelve months or longer, and taken the tea to my bastard he chelt. Beveryoddy. Bastard eat shelf, noddy noddy, bastard eat shelf, noddy noddy, taken the tea to my bastard eat shelf. Near fought, mental Jaden. <laughs> For I know a slack biff. <laughs> to his ord we will go and his nor will dock to try to avail us of his nestleized spoilage and see if he's able to unlick your pock. Unpick your lock, noddy noddy, unpick your lock, noddy noddy, see if he's able to unpick your lock. Ain't it old slack beef? A last but and sadder might find I'm unable. My nestleized spoilage is of no avail. I can't find the secrets of your combinations. The billy old sauce that has yitted a fail. <laughs> yitted a fail, noddy noddy, yitted a fail, noddy noddy, billy. Old sergeant has a and <laughs> Guess who? He's whack from the boars. I'm whack from the boars with mad shoes of disaster. A memorable tiss up I have to fun kai. While shine it was washing the jakes of Gibraltar, I carelessly crap crop the D. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we all make mistakes. As the Dalek said, climbing off the dustbin. <laughs> over the side, over the side, nutty nutty, over the side, nutty nutty, carelessly crop the D over the side. Fair maiden, alas and alack, I'm locked up forever. When up stepped a bait boy, said me bit to leave. If you will allow me to change your chamber, I'll open you up with my cuplicate D. Cast Loras, cuplicate D, nuddy nuddy, cuplicate D, nuddy nuddy, open you up with my cuplicate D. Thanks very much. Ooh, here's another love song. Uh, <laughs> that's what they call shining wit in Birmingham, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just testing. Um, any, any Nottingham Forest fans? Yes. Any Notts County fans? Yes. Mm, it's like... I was in Nottingham a few weeks ago, I had my picture took um, with a bloke called Frank Clark who plays for Nottingham Forest, and he was, pardon me, oh dear, wind. So I've been to the doctor about it, he gave me a kite. <laughs> um, 
Um, and, uh, Frank Clark used to play for, for Newcastle United for about 13 odd years and, um, and then he came to Forest and they had a testimonial for him in Newcastle a few weeks ago and it was organised Malcolm MacDonald mm. and they asked me to do it and uh, I know why now <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a great day actually Malcolm MacDonald's a knockout bloke fabulous bloke and uh, he actually presented me with one of his uh, Newcastle United shirts yes Hmm, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not very much, is it, really? I mean, well, I mean, he didn't actually present it sort of personally to me, really. Um, it was, I mean, I got to, to know him very well. We, we, I was playing football with, the, uh, with him on St. James... Well, not actually playing football on St. James' Park with him. I mean, that's still in it. He, I was watching him train. And, uh, <laughs> well, listening to him train, because I was actually outside the ground. But, I mean, <laughs> he runs very fast. He, and, uh, and anyway, when he finished training, he came out and sort of waved to me. Well, I think it was me anyway, because there was a couple of hundred people there, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was me anyway, you know. Anyway, he put his bag down to sign some autographs, and I nicked his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great concert, because um, he, he, Malcolm organised it, because he, he's done ever such a lot of work for Frank Clark. And another bloke called Paul Cannell, who was the... <laughs> silly name, isn't it? Paul Cannell. And I couldn't get over it myself. He's the, re he's the reserve Newcastle United striker. See? And his name's Paul Cannell. <laughs> what the Paul Cannell's going on here? <laughs> and he, he's gone to America. He's gone to Washington to play for Washington, you know. Can you imagine an immigration? What's your name there, Mac? Paul Cannell, eh? <laughs> you want to get in here, is that <laughs> Really laughed about that. Uh, Paul Cannell. <laughs> and Malcolm's got a Rolls Royce, you know. And uh, we'd, I went drinking with him. Ooh, at half past four, we're as the newt. You know, we're walking around like this, so it won't spill out. You know. <laughs> and there was myself, Malcolm, and, and Paul Cannell. <laughs> You're a great night, aren't you? <laughs> uh, if ever I lose Jasper Cat, I'm going to use Paul Cannell, mate. <laughs> and, uh, and, he's, and he's got this chauffeur's hat, you see, because uh, he uses it for a giggle. And, and, and I said I wanted to drive his Rolls Royce. And he said, yeah, great, you know, lovely, because I've never driven a roller. And uh, I put his, um, his chauffeur's hat on. So I put it on sideways, because it was, you know, silly bugger time. You know. <laughs> and I'm driving his Rolls Royce with my face against the window, just going... <laughs> driving around Newcastle city centre. <laughs> and uh, this, uh, this copper pulled us up, you see, because we were a bit... You know you are. <clears throat> he was banging on the window. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Oi! Oi! Window. It was one of these electric... Yes? Oh. The back window had gone down. <laughs> he's, he's got his head around the back window. Is this your car? Um... Oh, uh, not, mm, it's his. And he went, Whoa! Malcolm! Malcolm McDonald! Whoa! Whoa, no, Malcolm Watergraf! Malcolm, whoa, real, yes, then, yeah, whoa, whoa, like real butter! Whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Malcolm's like a god in Newcastle, it's really, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating to see. And people's faces when they see him are like, fantastic. And like, and, and like St. James's Park is right on the outskirts of the city centre. You know, you can see anywhere in the city centre, you can see St. James's Park floodlights, you know. And it's only a couple of minutes walk, let alone in the car. And I stopped the car and I kept asking people where St. James's Park was, you know. Sort of, you know, with this silly hat on sideways, going, Excuse me, could you tell me where St. James's Park is? <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa! What, Malcolm? Why, Malcolm? What's on his bus ticket, Malcolm? <laughs> and he'd have this long conversation with Malcolm McDonald and then tell him where St. James's Park was. <laughs> and he'd tell him Malcolm McDonald. Oh, I couldn't get that. Because yeah. well, actually, you've got a couple of local radio stations now, haven't you? You've got uh, Radio, Not radio Nottingham. And Radio Trent, yes. The BBC Radio Nottingham Radio... Yes, you've got two, haven't you? We've got two. We've got BRMB and Radio Birmingham. 
Trent's been off the air lately, hasn't it? It's, it well, it has been, hasn't it? Someone, no, it's not off now, but it has been, hasn't it? No, it, no, it hasn't. No, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lie, isn't it? It's definitely a lie. Yes. It doesn't, definitely hasn't it? It's just that you've, all your sets failed at the same time. <laughs> They're too good sales. I've been, I've been here a couple of times and, and talked to different people. And local local radio is very funny, isn't it? Really, I think. And it, <laughs> commercial radio because of, because of the adverts, you know. If it's safe in water, it's safe in Lux. <laughs> <laughs> not for my bloody goldfish. It's not. I can tell. You. <laughs> He's all white now. <laughs> See these great big bubbles out of his mouth. Mm. Get me out of here. <laughs> the, adverts, the adverts I like the best are the ones that actually you don't actually hear because they never actually get onto your radio. <laughs> There's a couple going. Bob Williamson from Bolton does a good one. He wrote a jingle for Brill Cream. And um, I thought it was great. It went something like, Put a dab of brill cream on your stairs and watch your granny bounce. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like it. They didn't like it. <laughs> and there's a medical firm in Birmingham and, uh, that I've got involved with, and they've, they've made this, uh, they've produced a brand new contraceptive pill. Uh, which they want to market under a trendy name, you know, to sort of hit the younger population. <laughs> you know, seven-year-olds. <laughs> well, not quite that young. And uh, they, want a, they want a really good trendy name to hit home, you know, and they've been asking for suggestions, and uh, I've sent a few in. <laughs> uh, pregno. <laughs> Inconceivable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no kidding. Oh. <laughs> the best one, the best one I heard was from a bloke in Bristol called Fred Wedlock. <laughs> hey, is he here? Is he? Is he? <laughs> he's, he's a great bloke. And uh, what a silly name, Fred Wedlock. And um, <laughs> he, he had this, uh, he had this um, uh, contract from uh, like a chemical firm in Bristol. And they produce this brand new household cleanser which cleaned absolutely everything from sort of pins to elephants. Right? And he had to sort of name it and do all the advertising blurb. Uh, and he called it Bugger. <laughs> and it stood for Best Universal Grit Grime and Effluent Remover. <laughs> Pretty snappy, huh? <laughs> he got this great slogan If Omo don't whiten it and does don't brighten it, bugger it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like that one either. <laughs> this is a request I've had uh, to do this particular song, which I'm always grateful to do. And it's, uh, it's written by a friend of mine, Jake Thackeray. Who you may know of. Yes, that's the Jake Thackeray. And, um, well, I mean, when I say he's a friend of mine, he's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he trod on me foot once. Anyway. <laughs> well, he didn't. The, he was in the car that went over me foot. So it's the same thing, isn't it? His car, his car actually splashed me. <laughs> See? Not directly, I'll admit, but um, <laughs> it drove through a puddle and I ran over to it and threw the water all over it. <laughs> and uh, Jake, I think, is uh, one of our top comedy songwriters. I love the stuff he writes. And um, I'll do a song that he writ. That he writ. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, he made an album called The Bantam Cock. And he's called that because... You'll go blind, you know, it's a fact. <laughs> and it's called The Bantam Cock because uh, he wrote a song called The Bantam Cock. It's all about a very passionate cockerel in a farmyard.
He was a fine upstanding bantam cock, so brisk and stiff and spry. <laughs> With a springy step and a jaunty plume and a purposeful look in his eye. In his little black laughing eyes there was I took him to the coop and introduced him to me seventeen wild-eyed hens. He a took and he took as a hero tooks. He bowed to them all and then he yuked and he took them all again. <laughs> and then upon the peace of me ducks and me geese, he rode laid it in true. With their glazed eyes and open mouths, they bore them with fortitude and a little bit of gratitude. He joked me giggling guinea fowl, he thrust his attentions upon me twenty hysterical turkeys and a visiting migrant swan. <laughs> And the bantam thundered on. He ravaged me fantail pigeons and a millily white columbine. And as I was locking up me budgery gar, he jumped me padded from behind. <laughs> Who was sitting on me shoulder at the time? Then all of a sudden, with a gasp and a go, he clapped his wings to his head, lay flat on his back with his feet in the air. Me bantam cock lay dead, and the vultures circled overhead, they did. What a noble brute, what a champion cock, what a way to live and to die. I was digging him a grave to save his bones from the hungry buzzards in the sky. When the bantam opened up a sly little eye, <laughs> he gave me a wink and a terrible grin. The way that rapists do. <laughs> he said, you see them big daft buggers over there? They'll be down in a minute or two. They'll be down in a minute or two. some sensational soccer news. Nottingham Forest manager Brian Clough has transferred John O'Hare. He sold him for £8 million to Tottenham Hotspur. Arsenal, Chelsea, Queen's Park Rangers, Southend and Chelmsford. Plus in return, Martin Chivers, Bertie Mee, Groundsman, Julian Cronk, Margaret Thatcher and a bag of Marlies. <laughs> Said Brian, my real ambition is to manage the Tiswas team. Due to a mix-up in the Football League fixture computer, Wolverhampton Wonders are in fact at home tomorrow to Liverpool and Crystal Yay! Palace. <laughs> Wolverhampton Wonders have offered to play sideways across the park. No change there. <laughs> While Liverpool will be playing with the wind due to a very bad pre-match lunch. <laughs> and Crystal Palace are playing without the wind as Malcolm Allison will be in the bath making a new film version of Jaws. <laughs> Birmingham City star player Trevor Francis, the flying winger who has to leave the field every 15 minutes to wipe the dead flies from his glasses, <laughs> had a magnificent game for Birmingham yesterday, scoring all 16 goals in their 8 all draw with Doncaster. <laughs> Uh, 
And finally, the European Committee for the European Cup have announced a new European competition that features all the winners of the European Cup. Every year, all European teams that have won the European Cup can compete for a new European Cup called the All European Cup Winners, Winners' Cup. At the same time, the European Committee for the Cup Winners' Cup have announced a similar European competition called the All European Cup Winners' Cup, Winners' Cup. There have been European suggestions that these two European competitions be combined into one and to have a European trophy to be called the All European Cup Winners' Winners' Cup and Cup Winners' Cup Winners' Cup Cup. It is envisaged that eventually there will be a Europom European competition for all the winners of the All European Cup Winners' Winners' Cup and Cup Winners' Cup Winners' Cup Cup called the All European Cup Winners' Winners' Cup and Cup Winners' Cup Winners' Cup Winners' Shields. Prune juice. <laughs> Pile driver, as it's called in the trailer. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I didn't know. Really um, so, a legacy from folk club days is that uh, uh, a, a lot of folk club singers sing uh, what they call broadsides. And broadsides, very basically, were. Um, <laughs> Uh, years and years ago, when anything important happened, somebody wrote a song or a, a poem about it, and they used to stick it on a piece of paper and flog it around the streets. And um, uh, ever in for a quick penny, uh, a friend of mine um, wrote a broadside, which I think is worth doing, and it's called uh, Cup Final 1976. was on the very first of May to Wembley I did roam. I did not have a ticket so I had to stay at home. I loaded up with telly snacks and several crates of beer. I flung a toilet roll at next door's cat for atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. At first, United's onslaught was stopped by Goalie Brave. Then Shannon missed a sitter, a step needed save. Then just on 40 minutes, a disaster made me cough. <laughs> me vertical hold went up the chute, me contrast knob fell off. <laughs> yeah. Upon the hour, United, they may well have took the lead. A right flank corner in swing came from Hill struck burn indeed. A fierce and not across the goal to McElroy in flight. He met it sweetly with his head, it bounced off the upright. Then Osgood at the other end, he opened up the door. And Shannon's cross gave Rodriguez a goal and chance to score. Alas, this bold captain did her a chance he could not bag. He sliced the ball which nearly hit the right. Right hand corner flag. <laughs> yeah. Then Doherty in panic made a sub stake to shy young. <laughs> the disappointed hill came off, McCready he came on. United's men they tried in vain to quell Southampton's tide. They ran around in circles, vanished off their own offside. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then seven minutes from the end, me mind was all agog. It seems that Stokes, he took a long ball from McCallion. They say that Stepney had no chance, but Stokes, he struck it true. Why do the goals all seem to come when you've nipped off to the <laughs> Then very soon the whistle blew, the Saints had won the day. The killer blow, it was confirmed on the Axi on replay. The day the South End went berserk, the day they hit the booze. The day Southampton they did win, and Doc's men they did lose. <laughs> written by a bloke called Alan White, a great friend of mine. Um, <coughs> football, I find, well, I find great relaxation. I don't know if you're a football, I'm a football freak, you know. Because um, I, I play football myself. 
and uh, I'm captain of the local team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just thought I'd tell you that. <laughs> oh, I was elected by the other four. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else will get the two bob out to toss up. You know, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm goaler, you know. <laughs> what a pathetic goaler. You know. Well, no one else would do the job, so it's all right. Good and bad guys. We, we almost won 2 0 last week. <laughs> we lost 8 1. <laughs> I scored a hat-trick. <laughs> and, uh, yes, it's not been the best season, I must admit. They're getting a bit despondent about me. And uh, they're going to put a bell in the ball so I'll know when it's coming. <laughs> After last week's game, I was that depressed. I sat in the dressing room. I hung me a boot upon the wall. I put my head in my hands and missed. <laughs> Talking about local radio stations as well, I, um, <laughs> no, I, I did, um, I'd, talking about violence in football, so they're both are, are sort of correlated in this instance, because um, violence, uh, well, I suppose it's, I don't know, it's a malaise of society, isn't it, really? Well, I think it is. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what it means either, but it's sounding good. He's out the Guardian again. And I think, you know, if it wasn't in football, it would have been... You know, some other sort of croquet or something. <laughs> <laughs> or cricket, anyway. <laughs> Look, get off, will you? Get off. <laughs> Most unfair. <laughs> Send a little written note to the umpire. I recommend you see an optician. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a whole programme about it. <laughs> And anyway, I've always, I've not, always managed to avoid violence. Um, usually, I'm sort of, you know, sitting in between the seats on the floor, watching, watching it go. But um, I had a nano escape. I went to, uh, I did Newcastle. I did, uh, I think, called Radio Metro, and then from Radio Metro, I went to a thing called um, a station called Radio Clyde. And Radio Clyde is in Glasgow, and I did, I was doing this rock program, see, uh, on the, on the Saturday night, and you know. It's, it, Nothing to do with climbing or anything. It was, um, like a, you know, they featured rock groups like the Ollies and the Wombles and things like that. <laughs> and uh, I got in from Newcastle at sort of like about 11, 12 o'clock in Glasgow. And it, when I got this on a Saturday, it just happened to be the local derby between Glasgow Rangers and Glasgow Celtic at Ibrox, you see. And like it's a mecca of a football game. It really, I mean, if you're a football freak, you've got to see, you know, a Glasgow Rangers and Glasgow Celtic football match because you hear so much about it, you know. It's like, it's like Warsaw and Port Vale. <laughs> you know, you've got to see it. <laughs> you've got to see it. And, uh, and I was talking to them at Radio Clyde. I was saying, uh, you know, I mean, is there any chance of a ticket? again? go, ooh, blonde, it sold about four years ago, you know. He <laughs> said, well, we, we've got one here, you see. Because they always send us two, and we send one reporter off, and, they, and we've always got one left. I said, you're joking, really? He said, yeah. I said, is, is it in the seat in a minute? He said, well, no. No, he says it's standing up, you know, behind the goal. And I thought, oh. He said, well, go on, you'll be all right. I said, well, you know, they're a bit nationalistic in Glasgow, you know. And he said, no, nah, you'll be all right. Keep your trap shut, you'll be all right. Nobody will know. I thought, oh, right. So I went off there. And it's, oh, it's a fantastic atmosphere. It's absolutely jam-packed solid. And, whoa, whoa, you can't move. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You're just standing. <laughs> Backs of your legs are getting soaking wet, you know. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's a reciprocal arrangement all the way down, really. <laughs> the bloke in the front gets it in the neck. <laughs> well, I'm sort of standing there, minding my business, and suddenly there's this little bloke in front of me with a tam on. So he turns around and he says, Hey, you! <laughs> hmm? <laughs> What's that team? Hawkeye. <laughs> uh, It's a broad brick moonlit nick. <laughs> you try to be funny! <laughs> What's a team? I don't know, I haven't got a program. It's a Saturnac! 
Luckily, I had a watch on, <laughs> and uh, I turned puce green, you know, and by miracles of miracles, I was standing in the Celtic again, so I was all right. Yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed how country and western's catching on these days? No, no, neither have I. No. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> it's like putting on a bra, isn't it? <laughs> not, not that I've ever put on a bra. Well, not very often, anyway. <laughs> Only once today. <laughs> yeah, the country westerns, there's loads of it in the chart. I'm stand by your man. Someone to claim to. <laughs> This guy, Chris Rowan, uh, this American fellow, explained that all country and western songs are in fact written within a framework of five subjects. Now, all country western songs, no matter where or how they're written, they've got to fit in within this framework of five subjects, which is why all country and western songs are about, in, in no particular order, uh, uh, prisons, mothers, trucks, farms and trains. <laughs> There's a country and western song to beat all country and western songs. Yeah. Well, since they took my mama off to prison. <laughs> things down on the farm ain't been the same. Now they gone and let her at the jailhouse. She drove her goddamn truck into a train. And then you always find that, like, dim blues, dim blues, uh, always follow country and western. Yeah, and when we get a country and western moon, we always get dim blues following in close behind. Look out my window, 
last year when I was a Negro. <laughs> oh, my school days are very lucky, I think. Ages ago, really. I went, I went, I was, I, I, I went through my whole school days uh, totally um, undiscovered. <laughs> <laughs> I was an absolute non-entity. I only ever had my name in the school magazine once, and that's when they print all the first formers' names, you know, when they arrived. It's the only time I ever got it in. And, uh, do you know, what, uh, do you, when you went to school, you used to have fagging. When, if, when you were in the first one, you were always the fags, you know, the first years, and like, everybody else used to pick on you. We used to have this thing in our school called the blue goldfish. And like, they used to say, have you seen the blue goldfish? You know, in your first year, you'd go, no! <laughs> And they used to stick your head down the bog and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in the fifth year and the first one was still doing that to me. I did it. <laughs> oh. And the only thing I was ever any good at was French. Ah. I, in fact, I did, in fact, pass the uh, GCE mock O level in French. <laughs> and <laughs> I got 17%, I remember it well. I was top of the form, too. <laughs> oh, we've got a seal in the audience. <laughs> um, any teachers here. Like, I think I failed my GCE proper due to bad, um, uh, well, I just had a lousy teacher. <laughs> I got this 17%. They're quite excited at school uh, that somebody got 17% in French, and that, they gave me a, this special French teacher for about six months to get me through the GCE proper. And it never really worked. And uh, he keep giving me these, these books to read, which are very odd French books. And uh, I think I'd appreciate them now, but at the time, I didn't know... <laughs> He was a bit weird, he was a bit weird. And, uh, and he, he never really taught me the rudiments of exams. I mean, like, when you take the GCE proper, right, I mean, um, for a start, like, they split you up from your mate, don't they? <laughs> you know? So, like, that was half the knowledge gone for a start. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the teachers at the front there, you know they are, and they hand you these brown paper envelopes, and you can't open them till um, the bloke at the front sort of gives you the okay, you know, and this guy's at the front with his watch and he said, Ale! And everybody started, you know, getting the stuff out of the paper bags, except me, because I hadn't got a clue what it was on about. <laughs> I thought, they're all cheating, look, look. I thought, well, I'm going to cheat as well. And, uh, and I got my papers out of the envelope, and um, it was all in French. <laughs> I thought, just my luck, isn't it, eh? How unlucky can you? My, my counterpart in Paris has got the English paper, you see? <laughs> so I went up to the bloke at the front and said, look, can you translate all this, please? <laughs> he got really snotty. <laughs> I can't tell you what he said. Nobody else understood, but I've been reading these books he'd given me for six months and got a fairly good idea. Anyway, all I did, I wrote down, uh, I wrote down 32 verses of the French Eskimo Nell, <laughs> which has always made my party piece, and um, I got 17% again. <laughs> Somebody had a sense of humour, didn't they? Then? <laughs> and that has, uh, that has seen me through. Uh, 
Um, I'll do a song. I'll do a song. I'll do a Hebrew fertility dance. <laughs> called Have a Nagila. <laughs> <laughs> or have two if you want. <laughs> Now, on this one, um, look, um, you weren't too good on the singing bit, so I'll, I'll make it really easy this time. Um, you don't have to sing on this, you just have to clap, right? It's, it's like a genuinely ethnic Hebrew folk song, and it's a bit short, so I'll do it three times, it'll last together a bit. <laughs> and the first time I do it all by myself, right? So you get the idea, the words, and the rhythm, right? And uh, the second time is when you join in. Now, sing if you want to, but most of all, can you help me out by clapping in time with the music? Can you do that? Ah, well, then you... Uh, <laughs> get, get your two hands, too. You go, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Don't get your head in the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all you got to do, all right? As is in ethnic Hebrew, what I will attempt to do is to give you a very rough translation of the ethnic Hebrew into English, so you know what you're singing and clapping about. has been struck by lightning. <laughs> I'm a 
I went into the chemist the other day. I said, you've got any cotton wool balls? He said, what do you think? I'm a bloody golly one. I lost the mail. 